call it the summer doldrums, or where do we go from here? Hello, Market Club members everywhere. Adam Hewison here, co-founder of Market Club, with your midday market report for Tuesday, the 14th of August. At the moment, there appears to be a lack of conviction by both the bulls and the bears to move this market one way or another. This indecision has also registered with our trade triangle technology, with many of the major markets now indicating a sideways to mixed trend. It's been this way for quite some time. I think it's wearing a lot of traders and investors down. Normally, when you have indecision like we are witnessing right now in the markets, they are usually preparing for some big moves later in the year. The big moves may begin after Labor Day when many traders and investors return from this summer hiatus. Also, it is noted that volumes have been extremely light in many of the major markets, which underscores the lack of participation by both the public and professional traders. We're also going to be looking at a buy and hold strategy today, comparing it to our trade triangle technology. It's on a major stock that everyone knows, and the results may surprise you. We're also going to be looking at two new media stocks that look to be on the skids. Now let's go to the charts and our trade triangles to see what's happening in the market. So here we are at my home page as normal. We're going to go right to my portfolio and starting with the S&P 500 you can see pretty much it's the 70. All of these markets there's only one strong trend that's copper. Everything else is the mid 60s, 70s, mid 55s. Nothing going on really and that's the indecision we talked about earlier <coughs> today. So let's scope this in a little bit closer and <clears throat> excuse me and let's just see what's going on. Here we are. <clears throat> the one thing that stands out to me today, excuse me, I must take a drink of water. <clears throat> okay, one thing that stands out to me today is the fact that we took out the top of the Dantian trade channel and usually when that happens, and let me scope this in so you get a good idea. Normally when that happens, you're going to see this situation where you come back in the market like here, 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 and we just went out of it today. So normally you have this move out, it comes back in, and sort of there, and I think we'll see it come back down, and we're looking for a move down here. Now if we see this market trade and close below 1400 today. I think that's going to be a big sign that this market can come under pressure. You can see we are still in a sort of overbought condition. Kind of weird showing you a green but kind of an overbought condition right here and I think we can see this market pull back down to the I think the 1370 which is the midpoint which is we did here, here, here and here. So I think we could see this market get back down to this 1370 level with not too much changing and that's the kind of indecision we're seeing in the marketplace right now. So let's clear the screen and go to our next market. Next market we're looking at is the Euro. This is going to be very very interesting. On the weekly charts we have the start of a negative engulfing line which if we close, excuse me, that was last week, we closed this week lower for the week and I think it's one uh, 22.93 or somewhere like that. I think it's going to be a, that'll confirm a. Well, let's take a look. We don't have to guess. We can just look. So here's the weekly chart. Here's the negative engulfing line last week. If we close lower than the 122.86, well, 123.33 last, that's going to really put a kibosh on this. That'll confirm this candlestick bar as being a negative engulfing line and confirm a top, which means we should see this market move lower and sort of round out to the downside. So again, 122.86 is the level. If we close below that, I think we'll see this market really on the defensive. So let's see how that plays out. So let's clear the screen, go to our next market. And we've got a lot to cover today. Remember, we're going to cover that major stock that you know about. We'll show you all the signals and how they can help you improve your trading using these signals. Also, we'll look at two other stocks that are really very, very interesting and it just shows you how powerful these trade triangles are. So here we are. We're looking at crude oil. Crude oil, a little bit on the defensive today. It started out, moved out above the mid-range of the Donchian trade channel. Very key level to watch here in my opinion. I'm just going to put a simple trend line in. Very powerful tool, trend lines. And we're just going to go from here up to here and I think you have to, if we go below that, close below that, I think we'll see a, a pullback and also on the Williams percent R 
we're seeing more and more of not a divergence but just a, a weakening of this trend here's the high point right here which is right here we actually made a new high here but notice we did not do it in the Williams Bassett or is heading down so I think that's a clue that we're running out of gas here on the upside no pun intended and I think if we close below this trend line from I think it was the 24th of June I think we'll see this market on the defensive also watch the parabolic sometimes they're very good little indicators you can see here we came in boom that's the parabolic hit right there push the market up and now watch that on the downside because the major trend in crude oil is still down so Let's pay attention to that market this week. Let's clear the screen. Go to our next market. Next market is going to be the Dow. Same thing there. Key level to watch, in my opinion, today is going to be the 13,094 level, which is yesterday's opening level. If we close below that today, certainly it's going to be really on the defensive. However, the market is up right now, 22 points. It may not do it, but if we close below that, we've got about another. Well, the market would have to go down 100 points from here for this to happen. Hey, we've had some big 200-point days. It's not unheard of, so let's see how that plays out for the rest of the day. Looking at the Forex, this is the gold spot price. Again, this is looking very, very negative today. Uh, we were looking for a pullback. This is the weekly chart again. We were looking for a pullback. I think if we've got this market on the run, on the downside, I think we could very easily see it go down to the lower levels of its Dantian trade channel. If we scope this out just a little bit more, you'll skip, see where, I, where we're talking about. Here's the midpoint, and I think we could see this market pull back down. So we've sort of had the move down. If you just look at this just on a just a visual, you can see. So we had the move down like this, and we've really just sort of gone sideways. We really sort of tightened it up here, but we've just sort of gone sideways here. So we haven't really done anything dramatic. So I would not be surprised. I mean, the bears and the bulls Certainly the bulls have to be disappointed that this market is not, with all the problems we have in Europe, all the problems we have in slowdowns, I think it's telling you people aren't concerned about it, and which is a big surprise to a lot of bulls in this market. So let's go to our next market. In fact, let's just look, before we do that, let's just a quick look at the daily chart on gold. And as you can see right now, we've gone below the, uh, the very simple parabolic, uh, very nice little simple indicator, but you can see right there that just went there below there today and it's 1602 trading right now in the spot market we've been as low as 1591 so we've rounded about ten dollars from the lows and I think really we're gonna see this market probably chop around for a little bit but you can see it's just a very choppy indecisive market very difficult for most traders to get their arms around this unless you're really on top of it sitting in front of the screen and you have super access to the markets so let's go to the next market this is the Nasdaq NASDAQ is looking a little bit heavy, just moved outside of the Donchian trade channel. You see how, let's go that a little bit closer. So you can see I've just tipped outside of the Donchian trade channel. If it closes lower today, and I certainly, when I say lower, if it closes below the 2,999, let's say the 3,000 level, uh, that would be not good. But I think more importantly, if it closes below 3,018, which was the opening yesterday, I think that's going to put a lot of people nervous on this market so let's see how that plays out copper is another story you we had the big down day yesterday it's really not going anywhere today we still are negative on this market and this tends to be a I think a harbinger of things to come the slowdown in Europe slowdown in Japan and also in China and most of Asia I think we'll see this market just gradually erode down to the 330 level which is the lower level of the Donchian trade channel we're not quite well, we are, I should say, not quite where we are oversold. But again, the volume has been very, very light on this, this pullback. So not too much to get excited about there. But the trend, it clearly, or the minus 100 is on the downside. So let's take a look at our next market. And that's going to be silver. You know, let's bag silver because there's not much going on there. There's other markets I want to talk about that are more interesting. Here's the Reuters Jeffries CRB index. Again, we talked about this. Let's scope that out to a six-month chart. We talked about the, the rally. We've had this double top that I really want to, uh, let's just do, let's just go to a very simple line chart and show you how powerful this double top is. And it really is amazing. Here's the double top. Whoops, not there. Let me just wipe this out. Okay, let's go to the double top, which is right here. 
and it's the pivot point. If we go below the pivot point, then I think there's a good chance you'll see this market uh, trade down to probably the 285 level, which is basically subtracting, flipping from the high of 305 to 295, flipping that down, it gives you that. So from there to there is 285. So I would not be surprised to see this market on the defensive. Certainly the grains have been a little bit disappointed. Well, not disappointed, they've been fantastic. But you know everything has its day, and it's sort of day in the sun. And I think for the most part, you know, metal's down. Uh, copper's sort of barely up. Some of the other markets are soft. So you've got a minus 65, indicating that, that we're sort of in a trading range, but we haven't got into a strong trend yet. So let's just clear the screen. And let's just go to our portfolio because here's the here's the first stock I want to take a look at and with the hold that we're going to tease you a little bit while longer but here's the first stock I want to take a look at in fact we're going to go to our recent trade triangles because it showed up today and that's why we want to look at it so the first stock we want to look at volume greater than two million this I always look for liquid markets I don't want to be trading markets that trade maybe 50,000 shares a day it's absolutely a fool's game and we want to look at monthly trade triangles because that's our big trend for stocks. We're looking at equities right here. You could also look for other markets, foreign exchange, futures, and so forth. But we're just looking for equities. And we're going to search just today. Now, hit the scan button. And you'll see this is there. It computes it. Look what the first market is. Yahoo. Pretty interesting, huh? So look at Yahoo. And Yahoo basically is a sell right here based on our numbers and our monthly trade trials. We're also going to be looking at, at a major stock, and this is Gannett. Okay, These other markets that are trading like $0.13, cents, cut those out. You don't need to look at those. They're just, just too, too small. So anything over, let's say, $10, you definitely want to be looking at. So you can look at the Saks. Obviously, that's a buy today. Halliburton, also a buy today. Gannett, also a buy today. Also a sell is this market right here, Yahoo, which is really pretty interesting. So let's close everything off. And let's take a quick look at Yahoo. And we'll see where that thing came in today, where the sell signal came in. Actually, if you hover over here, it tells you the red monthly came in at 1480. And it's currently trading at 1480, 1479 to be exact. So let's just click on the little blue box, which gives you the chart. And here's the chart coming up. And you'll see the trade triangles will come right in, and uh, there it is, right there. Boom! Look at this. It's way, way. That's not a good sign for Yahoo and that, and the new president they have there. This is, you know, what happens. It's kind of like what happens with something when they lose their mojo, they lose their, their the mystique. It's sort of the Yahoo mystique has sort of gone out of the markets now. They've been around for a long time. Yes, they get a ton of traffic, but there's something that's just not appealing to people. It's kind of like, well, the kids want to look at, let's say the kids, the young people, I should say, want to look at other stuff that's cool. And speaking of this, I did notice that another major stock, which was very cool, very coveted by investors, is down the toilet today. It's down about 25%. Now let's just go to back to our portfolio. I'll show you what that is. So we're going to put a stock in. It's easy to do. Just click on here. And we're just going to type in Groupon, and there it is, and we just go double click on that, and there's minus 100, and we're going to look at the stock, I want to share with you, this is not the stock we want to look at, by the way, longer term, I'm going to take everything off the screen, make a very simple chart, a bar chart, candlestick chart, and we'll just go click on that, boom, and we'll scope this out to max, that's the, all the history we have since this market started, and we'll just say, okay, where did our monthly trade trial come in? Well, here it came in right here at 1721. 1721. That's on March 8th. After we had enough data to, to analyze this market, you can't trade these markets off the get-go when they first come out because there's just too much of a crapshoot. So here it is, March 8th, 1721, currently trading at 557. So 1721 to 557 almost $12 profit on a short sale or saving you from a disaster. This market is down today 27%. That's a huge amount of money. I don't care who it is. So it just shows you these fads, these 
social networking fads, all these things, if they're no good, they're going to go down. And that's the key thing to look at. Just go with what the market's telling you because this market is true to what the smart money is doing. When the trade trials kicked in on March 8th, it said, get out, get out, get out, or get short. But do not be long. So there's the, there's the proof in the pudding. Now we're going to go back to our trade triangles and show you the other stock we talked about. And that's a well-known Gannett, well-known media company. So what is this? The rise of the old media versus the new Yahoo's sell signal Gannett is a buy. So let's just take a look at that chart. And we're going to analyze this one. And I promise you we're going to analyze this market in detail so you get a good idea of where things are. Okay, so I'm going to go max, which is the maximum we have on this. <clears throat> so the first signal you can see is here, and that's 79.75. I'm go I've written everything down. I'm just going to put them in for you. So here's the first one, and let me just get my pencil. There it is. So the first signal was 79.75. That was exit. That means just get out or get short. This signal here was a buy because it's a green monthly trade triangle. And that was at 57.27. Okay, so market goes up. We exit. Okay, 57.46 for a profit of plus 0.19. Not exactly thrilling, but the important thing is, look what you missed. Boom. You missed this huge down move from 57.46 to the next buy point, because it's a green, there's the green. The next buy point came in at $5.83. So can you imagine, you would have sat through a $52 loss if you were holding this. A buy and hold is a disaster in these markets, but you would have sat through a $52 Loss, whereas you would have bought it at 583, you'd be out at 1393, okay, and that was a plus eight dollars and ten cents. Pretty nice on a five dollar share, five dollar stock. That's pretty good. So you would have got out, you would have got back in the market here, and that was at 1440. And I'm going to show you a loss because they're not all winners. 1440, and you'd be out here at 14.26, okay? So you would have lost 14 cents plus commissions. Not not too much, not too, to worry about, but you also had a buy here at this point, and this was on December 5th of 2011, and that was at 12.40, and you would have gotten out here at 13.48, and that was for a profit of a dollar eight. Not great, but still a profit. The bottom line is, and this is the key thing to remember, is these trade triangles can keep you out of harm's way. A buy and hold, we came in, we started the year right here, uh, started our year, which is right back in August of, uh, sometime, actually, I'll start, at August 18th of 2004. The market was trading at $84 a share. $84 a share. It's currently trading at $15 a share. We'll just do simple math. And that is a difference, uh, let's see, of $69 you would have lost per share. Percentage-wise, it's huge. The way we did it with our monthly trade triangles, you actually came out, so this is a negative per share. We came out with a plus $9.23 profit on this huge down move. And we didn't go short. That's the cool thing. Hey, this is how trade triangles can help you with your trading. We didn't pick some obscure stock that no one's heard of. We picked a stock that everybody's heard of. We showed you Groupon, how you would have avoided that total meltdown. They'll probably go out of business. We also showed you other stocks this past week. We showed you Yahoo today. That was a darling back in the late 90s, 90s, yes, 90s. And now it's like uh, uh, nobody wants to do it. Nobody wants to touch it. It has all these great assets, but hey, it's, it's just not doing it. Is the same thing going to happen to Facebook? It may have almost a billion users, or whatever the number is, 
But the reality is, can they make money and sustain making money? Or is the youth of today suddenly going to say, oh, something else is cool, it's coming along. There's other things in the work. That's what's so dynamic about the Internet and Internet businesses. Unless you snooze, you lose in these markets. And I think that's the key thing. So Adam Hewison for Market Club, thanks for stopping by. Every success. And remember, if you're looking for one-on-one -on -one Market Club coaching, give us a call. Okay? Hey, I'll be back tomorrow. Let's see how these markets trade. And let's see how the markets close today. It could be very, very interesting today to see how these markets close. I'm betting that they're going to close on the negative side, even though they're plus right now. So we'll see what happens. Adam Hewison for Market Club. I'll see you tomorrow. Have a great day trading.